Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you're at, let me know below. So this is going to be an introduction to the project management course, and this should help you with your exam. This is not going to be, you know, I don't know how long this is going to be. It might be end up being about 30 videos. I'm not sure. I have to be careful with my music, apparently. I got a hater, so I must be moving up in life. Uh, so apparently this person is pretty common. Um, anytime you put music in your video, I didn't even realize, um, that there was music in the background, but I'm sure it's not copyrighted. But anyway, so, um, I got my first hater that claimed there was a copyright. So anytime there's music that comes up in this, I will be pausing the video cause I don't need any drama in my life. I have three jobs, and um, one of them is creating these YouTube videos, and I don't have time for that mess. So anyway, I'm done my venting now, and um, we're going to get on with this study class. I appreciate you all, but if you see me pausing anything, that's why, because there's music popping up. Just to let you know. So look for the numbers at the end of the videos. And that's how you're going to stay in order. If you go out of order, then you might get confused. So just try and stay in order. Alright, I am going off the screen now. Because I am not the center of attention in this video. Thank you and please subscribe. Stay tuned for more classes. We can now look at project management through the same six visual pathways that our brains are so good at. So here are the six slices of a pie through which we will try to understand project management. Every project is owned and managed by people, some of them important and some not so important. These people who have a vested interest in the project are called stakeholders. Then there is actual product or service that is going to be delivered as a result of the project. These two constitute the who and the what of the project. The next component in project management is the dimension of time. As you will find out shortly, projects are born at some point in time and die when they run out of time. And it is here in this when portion of the pie that we will talk about the schedule of the project. All the math that you will need on the project will be done in this area that we will call the how much or the how many pathway of project management. It is here that you will quantitatively determine the number of people you will need to perform the work, how much money you will need, and to what extent of quality do you want the project to deliver upon. And lastly, how much risk you and your team are ready to take or even avoid during the course of the project. All projects happen at some place and in some company or organization. The people who work on the project belong to these organizations and work in some form of reporting structures that are part of the organizations. It is here that you will find out those hierarchical arrangements which will be useful for you to know where do you reach out to along these spatial lines that exist within these organizations. Most often, projects have to utilize contractors and outsource agencies either for services or procuring components of the product. It is here that you will find out where do we reach out to to get the work done faster and cheaper? When you put together all the previous aspects of the project, meaning the who and the what, when, how much, or the how many, and where, you can now start to imagine the how portion of the project actually coming together. This is where you will find out how the project is supposed to be done, and you will determine an appropriate methodology, model, or framework which shows you exactly how you will perform the work on the project. This may be through the classical waterfall model or through the nimble agile model. And lastly, the larger question as to why are we doing this project is answered in the why portion of this pie. It is here we ask, what is the company trying to get out of this project in the first place? The business rationale to initiate the project and if it's really worth the effort to do this project. Hence, these are the six visual pathways of how we will see project management for the remainder of this course. And as you see here, these are very much aligned to the way we actually see things in the real world. Let's now quickly talk about how this course is going to be structured. The backbone of this course 
is the idea that we can see project management in the same way as we see the real world. That is, through the six visual pathways, which we are so comfortable with. Therefore, this course attempts to map the major concepts of project management through the six simple visual pathways to make this course true to its title, that is, the simplest guide to project management. We will use the six slices of the pie to guide through the numerous topics of project management through this simplified framework. We will also use another visual technique to make things simpler for us to understand the various processes involved in project management. We will use the concepts of systems thinking to visualize all the inputs and outputs feeding into the various processes of project management. It is a simple idea that source of inputs are fed into a process, here represented by a bathtub, where those inputs are regurgitated and mixed together by using various tools and techniques to eventually produce at the other end of the flow, some form of outputs or deliverables. Think of this as opening a tap of water to flow into the bathtub, and in the bathtub is where all the project work happens. And as you see here, you, the PM, will be the primary person facilitating this entire process. Now, using the various tools and techniques, you turn the inputs into something of value as outputs. These outputs are your interim project deliverables, like project plans, project schedules, budgets, and more importantly, the actual product itself. As you can see here, this is a simplified representation of the systems thinking concept that is borrowed from the systems theory, simplified and modified for our purposes. To understand the various concepts of project management thoroughly and clearly, we will use a fictitious example from ancient history this is only to simplify the lectures so that we don't need to spend time on explaining the nuances and the details of the project. While discussing the, this example, you will have to transport yourself back to ancient Egypt and put yourself in the shoes of a project manager who has been entasked with building a structure that we call the pyramids. As much archaic and somewhat ridiculous this example may seem, it will help us to quickly apply the concepts of project management introduced here without going into the details of the project or getting distracted by the nuances. So let's quickly go through the six slices of the pie to obtain a high-level summary of the project. The first question we ask on this project as a project manager is why are we doing this project? And the answer to that question is shown here in the why portion of the pie, which is to build a royal tomb for the deceased pharaoh so that his soul can ascend to the heavens in his afterlife. There may be other variations to why the pyramids were built in the first place. For the purpose of this course, let's stick to this simple explanation. Then comes the question, who are the most important people or stakeholders on this project? Well, the whole project is dedicated to one and only one person who is the most important stakeholder, the pharaoh, since it is for him that the structure is being built and it is his remains, well obviously once he has checked out, who will remain in the structure that is going to be built. The other stakeholders on this project could be the ministers in the kingdom, various priests, astrologers, and other people of importance who may advise you, the project manager, on the expectations of the pharaoh. Then there is the actual product that is being built here, which is the pyramid. It is the royal tomb in the shape of a pyramid and containing a chamber within it for the pharaoh or his mummified remains to be preserved in it forever. Next comes the schedule of the project, shown here in, in the when portion of the pie. Since this structure is for the pharaoh's remains to be preserved, it is important that, that the structure is built before the pharaoh has passed away. And that means it is important that the project be delivered quickly and swiftly, using the least amount of time possible. Let's say the project schedule is, at the most, from one year to a maximum of two years. In the how much and the how many, you will have to find out how many people you will need to get this mammoth job done in terms of the number of laborers, stone cutters, transporters, and other people who will be involved in the construction of the pyramids. You'll also need to know how much of Egyptian money you will need to not only pay the workers, but also for the stones that may be coming from another place. As you already know, this is all happening in ancient Egypt on the banks of the River Nile, and this is shown in the where portion of the pie. And like any other structure, 
the pyramids were also put in place one stone at a time. And this is shown in the how portion of the pie. 